Hello and welcome to Paul Ames Visual Journalist and today we're doing the second video in a series I started about how to upgrade from a Canon DSLR with a selection of Canon EF lenses to a more modern mirrorless uh, camera, full frame, to take advantages of the technology that's become available in um, mirrorless cameras. And one of the things I wanted to do was try to keep it affordable. Um, in the last video, which I'll point somewhere up around here, um, I said that uh, I couldn't afford to switch over to the Canon R system um, because one, it's very expensive to buy into, and even if you went the adapter route um, and adapted your existing Canon EF lenses, um, it was difficult to do because the Canon EF to R adapter is like hen's teeth here in Australia at the moment and you just can't get one. So I decided to switch to a, the Sony platform and buy second hand to get the best value for money. And I managed to get, as I said in the last video, a uh, second hand Sony A7R2 that had only got 50 clicks on the shutter, which was a bloody brilliant bargain. <laughs> and I bought two um, second hand Canon EF to Sony FE adapters. One was the Sigma MC11, which I talked about in the last video, and today we're looking at the other one, which is the Metabones Smart Adapter 5, second hand. Now new, these cost about 800 Australian dollars, which is a lot of money to take a punt on, I think you'll agree. You're not guaranteed any specific results, and um, you know, $800 is a lot to pony up to uh, have a bit of an experiment. Second hand, the uh, Mark V adapter goes for about 350 to 400 depending on the condition. I managed to get a steel, as I showed you, complete in box with everything, and uh, I paid 350 for that. I know there are people who will say, oh yeah, but you could have got a Viltrox um, adapter, much cheaper, newer. Um, the reason I didn't was one, Metabones have been a pioneer in this field. And um, two, is that using the Metabones, you do get um, the ability to upgrade the firmware. And as I found out with the Sigma MC11 experience, upgrading the firmware is key to the success of this um, experiment, really. So, Without further ado, we'll get into the nitty gritty. The adapter comes in a nice hard plastic case with two Allen keys that are for removing the attached Arca Swiss tripod mount and carrying out adjustments. Picking it up, the adapter feels well made with a metal body and both mounts are chromium plated brass for long life. There's a rubber gasket on the Sony mount side to prevent dust and moisture ingress and the adapter is lined with black flocking to prevent internal reflections. On the left hand side of the adapter is the lens release button, a USB port, an IBIS on off switch and a button you can customise like the ones found on the Sony G and GM lenses. There are two bad points. The first is the plug for the USB port is not of the flat variety that Sigma use that is attached to the adapter. In the six months that I've had it, the plug no longer fits snugly and is prone to dropping out, which potentially means it could be lost, making the adapter susceptible to damage. 
I've taken to taking it over with a bit of gaffer tape, but it's not what I would expect from an item costing so much money, especially when the Sigma at half the price has a better approach. Second is the black flock used inside the adapter. It is a dust and hair magnet and it inevitably finds its way onto the camera sensor. I seem to be forever cleaning the adapter, the sensor and having to spot my photos. In use, the Smart Adapter 5 has two modes. The first, green mode, the autofocus uses phase detection autofocus and is compatible with, according to Metabones, virtually all autofocus lenses. Most of the Sony native autofocus functions are not available when using green mode. The advanced mode, the autofocus uses a hybrid of contrast based and phase detect autofocus which makes it fast and accurate. But it's not compatible with as many lenses as green mode, but IAF is supported. In video you get continuous phase detect autofocus. To tell which mode your adapter is in, there is a small LED on the top of the adapter. For green mode the LED shines blue, and for advanced mode it is red. After a short while of using the green mode and not having a lot of success with it, I just switched to advanced mode and have left it there ever since. I've used the adapter with three lenses. The Canon EF 24-70 f4 L lens, the Canon EF 70-200 f2.8 L lens, and the Canon EF 100 f2.8 macro L lens. To help me get some idea of what I was seeing when I tested the lens, I needed a point of reference, and for that I used the Sony FE 28-70 f3.5-5.6 OSS kit lens, which can be picked up secondhand for about 200 Australian dollars. I wasn't looking at the optical quality, but the autofocus performance. Each of the Canon lenses had to equal or better the AF performance of that cheap kit lens. When shooting a sequence of a moving subject, in this case my reluctant Bull Terrier Frieda, the Sony 28-70 was achieving a 90% hit rate, which I thought was quite impressive for a kit lens. With the Canon EF 24-70 f4 ISL lens. Well, my initial tests were very disappointing, to be honest. Using single point continuous AF with a burst of five friends, none of the shots were in focus. So I changed the settings to lock on flexible spot with continuous AF and then got a hit rate of around 50%. Shooting videos were more promising. The autofocus was quick and positive and seemed to track well, but it didn't do as well as the Sony 28 to 70. All in all, a great disappointment. The Canon EF 70-200 f2.8 ISL lens, this is the Mark I version of that lens. This lens did not work well in expanded flexible spot with continuous autofocus. Typically the lens racked back and forth and then would settle on the subject for a couple of seconds and then drift off out of focus. Switching to the other modes was a very different story with the lens quick to acquire focus. I abandoned the Bull Terrier test she was just too reluctant by now, in favour of a plane doing some crop dusting. Out of five runs I got three with a 100% hit rate, one with a 92% hit rate, and the last one at 61%. This averaged out to be 90%. The video performance, however, was woeful. At the short end, wide open, the lens was very slow to acquire focus, and when tracking it would lose the subject and be painfully slow to reacquire. At the long end, wide open, it was just slow. Hopefully, this will have found focus. Right, let's see what it does at 200 millimeters. I think that's found it. It's not quick.
With the 100mm f2.8 macro ISL lens, I didn't test this lens with moving subjects at all, as macro lenses are notoriously slow to autofocus at the best of times. The lens was slow to focus in single AF mode both at macro distance and normal distances. At normal ranges, despite being slow, it was very accurate. At macro distances, it would often get confused, and I found this would increase in low light or with subjects that had low contrast. For most people, macro photography isn't a fast-moving, high-pressure scenario, so this wouldn't really be a problem. What was a disappointment was that the OIS didn't combine with the IBIS, and I had to only use the OIS. Come on, come on. This is a lens I'm desperately wanting to work. And this is the Canon 100mm f2.8 ISL macro. And this is a beautiful lens and I desperately want to be able to use it on my Sony cameras. So, this is real moment of truth. Now I put the focus limiter on, so it's not having to rack all the way through from its entire focus range, but uh, it does seem to be struggling. Oop, there we go. Enough for tests, let's look at real world usage. For landscape and macro work, all these lenses did okay in real world use. But for events and grip and grin work, it was not all beer and skittles. The event I photo photographed was a medieval fair, and I used both the 24 to 70 and the 70 to 200. The 70 to 200 did rather well photographing mounted arches and taking candid portraits. Excellent stuff. The 24 to 70 didn't do so well at all. I photographed a display of medieval combat, and only one in five were in focus. These guys weren't moving fast, they were just erratic, and the tracking could just cope. In conclusion, my experience with the Metabone Smart Adapter 5 was quite a mixed bag. The lens that I thought would do very well, the EF24-70 to F4, didn't do well at all. And the lens I really wanted to work, but thought wouldn't do well because of its age, was the 70 to 200 2.8 and it did surprisingly well when used for stills. The 100mm macro did as I thought. Also, I am left wondering whether things would have been better if I'd had a later generation Sony body, as they just seem to have a quicker performance than the generation 2. Well, I hope you found this informative and interesting. I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.